Okay, I'm going to show you how to remove the rocker arm assembly, specifically the intake side, on a EJ253 uh, with AVLS. So this came in a variety of Subarus, the 2.5i uh, with the 2.5i engine, single overhead cam. Um, this one is from a 07 Legacy sedan, um, but the car this is going to be used in is my Outback. I've got an 06 Outback, just the naturally aspirated. Um, so AVLS, if you didn't already know, which I'm sure you do if you're watching this, is basically a variable valve lift system only on the intake side. So when it activates, you can see this second little rocker arm right here follows a different lobe on the camshaft that's more aggressive, opens up this intake valve more uh, when this rocker arm is activated. When it's deactivated in lower RPMs, this follows an, another smaller camshaft profile that has just a tiny, tiny bit of lift. So you've got this intake arm having a nice amount of lift, this one having hardly any lift at those low RPMs. You get like more combustion chamber swirl, yada, yada, whatever. Um, so with the system, you've got this spring-loaded mechanism to keep this uh, sort of tertiary rocker arm um, in place so it's not flapping around and stuff like that. Uh, very similar to Honda's, uh, some iterations of Honda's VTEC, except, I mean, the concept is the same, but the way it's actuated is a little different. Um, you've got these little push pins right in here that when oil pressure or when it when the signal turns on when it wants to activate shoot some oil pressure through here pushes one of these push pins through um, connects these two together and then now this rocker arm is following the more aggressive cam profile so anyways um, to remove this um, this is the exhaust side right here um, and it's all on this like little uh, assembly shaft and it's got four bolts um, and it's separate than the intake side. So you can actually unbolt this one separately from the intake and completely take it off. It's fine. It's not a big deal. This little shaft is kind of in the way, but you can still maneuver it out, whatever. Um, so the manual says before you loosen these four 12 millimeter bolts, um, you want to release that spring tension on this sort of middle arm. Um, and I've watched a few videos where people don't do that, and that's fine. It still works. You can still undo these, just loosen the middle first, just do it a little bit by bit, and then slowly get it up, and then you can take it off, and that's totally fine. Um, there is some potential for damaging the threads that these bolts go into, um, and and if you, you know, may, maybe it could bend something, I don't know, whatever. Um, but as you can see, the manual says to use this special tool, this spring installer tool, and then it doesn't really illustrate exactly how to do this, but you've got the adjuster pin, um, the spring stopper, and then the spring, and it says to just kind of, let's see what it says here, use the ST to rotate the spring stopper in the direction of the arrow to remove it from adjuster pin. So I mean, that's, that's really the only explanation that you get. I didn't really understand it. Um, but after taking it off and putting it back on, I finally figured it out. Um, so you've got this little bracket right here. I'm just going to use this. This is our tool we're going to use, by the way. Um, and then, maybe you can kind of see it. There's this pin right here. And this thing is kind of like a U-shaped sort of bracket. And the spring tension is right over here, pushing it in this direction. So this little retainer pin sort of thing here. Is keeping everything in place and there's two of these on the intake side for each head so um, this is my special tool that we're going to use it's just a 3 8 inch drive extension and then I have an adapter to change it from 3 8, 3 8 inch drive to quarter inch drive and then with my quarter inch drive I'm using this little four millimeter socket that's all that's all we're doing. As you can see, this four millimeter socket just goes right in there, kind of like that. And it fits on pretty nicely. It's not too bad. So I'm going to try and do this with one hand while holding my phone. It's going to be tough, but we'll, we'll, see if, we'll see if I can do it. Okay. So all you do is I'm going to grab this and kind of turn it, rotate it like this to release. I'm going to put some 
tension against the spring like that and then you kind of it's hard with one hand there and then you just pull it outwards like that that releases that spring tension so this middle rocker arm is nice and loose and then you do the same thing on this side you just get this guy and then again if you have two hands it's a lot easier so you push down like that and then you kind of bring it towards you try to bring it towards you and it's tough with one hand there we go okay and that's it now you can go ahead and loosen these um, according to the FSM it does say also to loosen these little guys in um, where is it right over here A and B which correspond to these two bolts but I'll be honest with you I don't understand the significance of doing that um, it would well I bet it would take this thing off it would probably be able to remove even more tension but you don't you don't have to do that so after this you can take this off completely and it's much easier um, and then insulation is just re is reverse of removal. Keep these things unloaded just like, like they are like this. And then you want to make sure that these pins are lined up the way that they are right here. It takes a little bit of finesse. You can kind of see it. I mean, if once you get them out, you can see it a lot better. But you've got a pin right here in this part of it. You've got one pin in the middle and then this spring-loaded pin right over here. So you've got three pins. Just make sure you kind of line them up as you're pushing it down. Do the same thing on this side. Make sure they're nice and lined up. Kind of get it down, settle it down, thread your bolts in by hand. And then get them to where they're just kind of finger tight like this. Um, you could torque them down all the way. It's, it's, probably, it's probably not a bad idea. You can do that and then just do the exact same method to put it back in. So I'll show you. So we'll just pretend that we've taken it out and put it back in. And then to reinstall it, you just get this guy, kind of slide it in there. And again, I'm doing it one-handed, which is harder. There you go. See? Now it's in there. Just like that. And then the same thing on this side. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at it, but not pointing the camera at it. I apologize. Okay. So, like that. Okay. And then you've got the pin right there. And then just bring it down. Kind of push it over to the side. And then it goes right in. And that's it. Easy peasy. You don't need to buy that tool. This is your tool. This is stuff that probably most people have. You could probably get away with an even bigger socket, like a six millimeter or something, but the four millimeter fits it nicely. Very little play, much better. So yeah, so that's how you do it.